I'm a simple man. If it's good enough for Wince Geronda, it's good enough for me. I've been schlonking raw eggs for the past two years or more. One raw egg in the morning, one raw egg at night. And on top of that, I'll have hard boiled eggs with the shell on. And this is exactly what Bruce Lee did. So you see, these shells are pure calcium and they are massively beneficial for tooth health. My tooth sensitivity issues are completely gone. But you say, what about the salmonella risk? What about food poisoning if you schlonk them raw? And what about the biotin deficiency? A lot of people might have heard that if you have raw eggs, it's going to cause biotin deficiency. And I'm going to answer all these questions and more in this video. You see, most people don't know this, but factory farmed eggs come from a result of animal torture. These factory farms, they starve these birds for weeks on end, stress them out, they start losing their plumage, so their feathers. And this is a process called forced molting. And after this, they manipulate the artificial lights to kind of stress them more and make them think it's always daytime. So after this forced molting period, which is torture on its own, they're laying a lot of eggs per day and really big eggs. So from a productivity standpoint, from an output standpoint, it makes sense, which is why it's legal in the US. This practice is completely illegal in India, UK and the EU. It's no surprise that these highly stressed diseased chickens are laying eggs which have bacterial contamination. This is the same story as with cows. If you pump cows full of hormones and destroy their immune system, then of course their milk is going to be contaminated requiring pasteurization. But coming back to eggs, it's not the egg itself that's the danger. It's not the egg itself that's toxic. It's more so the farming practices. So I'll prove this to you. In Japan, right? In Japan, it's actually very, very common to have eggs raw. It's a part of their regular breakfast. They'll just take an egg raw, break it over some rice, and that's breakfast. There's not this huge hysteria or fear around raw eggs there. And the reason is that they have better standards. And for that reason, I do not fear food poisoning risk with eggs because I'm purchasing the best quality eggs there is. This is pasture raised non-GMO eggs. So these hens have been living their best life out in nature, eating insects, small lizards. They get carrot, they get all kinds of different stuff. And they're healthy chickens living out in the sunlight. So these eggs have a lot of vitamin D. And because they're not immune compromised, these eggs don't have the same level of risk as a low quality factory farmed eggs. That being said, should you consume raw eggs? I cannot make the decision for you and I don't make any recommendations in this video. <laughs> also, you got to think about what the chicken themselves are eating. If your chicken is grain fed, so you're buying low quality eggs, grain fed chicken are fed with basically low quality corn and low quality soybean, both of which are likely contaminated with ZEA, which is a mold estrogen. And of course, soy contains phytoestrogens. So you're eating an estrogen bomb if you're eating low quality egg. On the other hand, if you're eating high quality eggs like what this is, you're getting the best in terms of B vitamins, protein, literally everything. Which brings us to biotin. Raw egg whites can create a biotin deficiency. A lot of you might have heard that if you eat eggs raw, it's actually not that good for you because the egg albumin it contains something called avidin, which is a protein. And this avidin, it, it binds to biotin. And biotin is a B vitamin. It's very required for the body for healthy functioning. And the idea is, because this avidin is binding to biotin, it doesn't get absorbed by our stomach, our digestive system, I should say. And therefore, cooked eggs are better than raw eggs because this avidin is destroyed by the process of cooking. But this doesn't really track because cooking only destroys up to 60% of the avidin in eggs anyway. So even if you do cook your eggs, you're still getting 40% of avidin. So cooking isn't even that effective at destroying avidin. And also, biotin deficiency is very uncommon, especially in fact, it's impossible to get a biotin deficiency if you're on an animal-based diet unless you have some kind of genetic predisposition. So no, you're not going to get biotin deficiency because you eat raw eggs. Now the concern around salmonella or food poisoning, that's fair enough. That's a risk assessment that you have to make. But the concern around biotin deficiency is not realistic in my opinion. That concern only exists if you're schlonking like whole cartons of raw eggs every day. And the thing is, you can see biotin deficiency coming. It's not like a surprise event. Biotin deficiency, you're going to lose skin quality, you're going to lose hair quality. And my hair and skin quality have only gotten better with time. So I'm sure that I don't have any kind of biotin deficiency. Go, 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 go. And if you choose to have raw eggs, when should you have them? I personally have them one in the morning and one at night before I sleep. So that's right, I have incorporated a small breakfast into my routine. I've experimented with different things. I found that one fruit, usually a kiwi, plus one raw egg works amazingly. 
Now, is there any benefits of raw egg versus cooked eggs? No, I don't think so. It's just a matter of preference for me at least. So what I'll do is it depends. Okay, first off, it depends how you break the egg because that's also a massive counter to any salmonella risk. So I'm going to show you that. And like I said, it's just a matter of convenience. I don't want to take out time to boil an egg or make an omelette sometimes in the morning. I just want to get my nutrition in fast. And I'd really try to minimize my morning routine as much as possible. Literally, it's three things. First, salt. Second, sunshine. And three, shower. So literally, wake up, of course, use the bathroom, go outside, get some sunshine into my eyes, come back in, have some electrolytes. And third, go and have a shower. It doesn't even have to be a cold shower. Just a regular shower will do. And then I'll come to my kitchen, shlonk an egg, have a kiwi, and my day starts. I should also say, especially in winter, you want to incorporate eggs into your diet for the vitamin D benefit. Of course, you're always choosing pasture-raised, and you're never going to have your regular store-bought styrofoam bullshit eggs again in your life. So how do you break an egg? Easy. Do not use a fork to smash your eggshells. Do not use a sharp corner to break your eggshells because what happens is when you do that, the fragments of eggshell will actually shoot into the egg and could potentially contaminate the egg or at the very least now you have a sharp piece inside your mouth. So much better way to do it is just a flat surface. So like this table, take the egg, brisk tap, you'll have, you'll have like a, what do you call it? Like a depression, right? You'll have a depression the membrane behind the shell is still intact, so it's not going to leak at this point. So you have the depression, you just bring it over your, um, you know, your cup, whatever it is. Use your thumbs to just divide the egg and it'll pour out. And you've basically minimized any chance of the egg touching the shell. Because it's usually the shell, which, if it contains any bacteria, it's going to be on the shell, not inside the egg. So my shell did not really touch the albumin, didn't really touch the yolk. So we have pure egg albumin and yolk in, in this cup and it's just a matter of schlonking, it's just like taking a shot. There we have it, egg schlonk, right? <coughs> so how much time did that take? Maybe 30 seconds at most. And then I'll have a kiwi or a banana, but whatever your fruit you choose, make sure that you actually wash it well with either 10% salt solution or apple cider vinegar, 10% solution, so that any of the pesticides and insecticides are removed from the surface of the fruit. <coughs> so cholesterol, which eggs have cholesterol. Cholesterol is what transforms into either testosterone or cortisol or a, a number of different hormones, but let's talk about these two. I want to bias the formation of testosterone over cortisol. And having a small little breakfast in the morning lowers your stress and allows your body to do just that. And on top of that, eggs are important for another reason. So eggs contain sulfur and sulfur can bind to and neutralize unbound iron in your blood. This is important because you don't want unbound iron in your blood. It's a whole different topic, of course. It has to do with heavy metal toxicity. But if you want a full course, like a full course on every single detox topic imaginable, everything from EMFs all the way to parasites, and of course, xenoestrogens and everything else, then I do have that course ready down below. And speaking of eating eggs with the shell on, is this something worth doing? Yes, but this is after hard boiling. And that's because you're actually eating the shell and the shell could be contaminated. So yeah, you absolutely want to boil the shell before you eat the whole thing. And how often should you eat the shell with the egg? At least once a week, just eat the whole damn egg. It's not that bad. You can, you can eat this. I mean, like this one is not boiled, obviously. It's just from the carton. But if I boil this egg, I will smash it. I will smash it whole with the shell for the calcium benefits. 100% legit. Bruce Lee did it all the time. If it's good enough for Bruce Lee, it's good enough for you and me.